I'm Brian Ross, joined tonight, as always, by my colleague, Rhonda Schwartz. And Rhonda, a fascinating story. As you know, that we thought what we had was a bombshell interview with former Playboy playmate Karen McDougal, who was going to lay out all the details of what she said was a steamy 10-month affair with Donald Trump. That's right, Brian. And then suddenly she canceled the interview. It was only later we learned that the National Enquirer, in a deal worked out by then-President Trump's personal attorney, had promised her $150,000 and to promote her career as a fitness model if she didn't talk about the affair. It's a practice that's become known as catch and kill. And of course, what we wanted to do was catch and broadcast. And now four years later, after we came up with some new information, Carrie McDougall has finally agreed to answer our questions on the record, along with her lawyer, Carol Heller telling us she now has asked for God's forgiveness for her sins. You know, God forgives. I've repented for what I've done, what I did back then with, um, with Donald. I've apologized publicly. And most importantly, I've been forgiven by Jesus. So I'm happy. I'm at peace. I love where I'm at today. And honestly, I love who I am today. And you feel you had to repent for what happened with Donald Trump? Absolutely, I had to. I, I knew it was wrong. It was a sin in, God eyes, in God's eyes. Um, yeah, I repented, and you know I'm not going to keep apologizing for it because I've already apologized. I've already repented, and you know I'm I'm forgiven in in my father's eyes. So the world can look at me how they look at me, and that's okay. I understand, um, but I've moved on, and I'm at peace. Do you imagine Donald Trump has in any way repented? <laughs> um, I can't say what what he has and hasn't done with his wife and his family, but um, I doubt it. When her story did come out, it was big news. They met, she says, in June 2006 at this party at the Playboy Mansion during the filming of The Apprentice. Wow, beautiful. Throughout the night, it was kind of obvious that there was an attraction from his part to me. Only later would the story of the $150,000 payment come out. And as you recall, prior to the signing the deal, you were talking with me and with Rhonda Schwartz about doing an interview when we worked at ABC News then, and then that got canceled. The deal was canceled because we had signed the deal with AMI um, in order for me to work and never talk about it again, and never talk about the relationship again. And were we kind of, so we, we were sort of leveraged for you in a way? I didn't know that at the time, but I assume that you probably were, yes. And I, I really want to reiterate that Karen was more than willing to talk to you and did in great detail, knowing with no expectations of having any kind of compensation. And I think people should be aware of that, that you were not ever giving a promise to pay anything. It was going to be completely gratis. The White House has denied that Trump had a sexual relationship with Karen McDougal. But she says she kept a calendar or diary of the 10 months she was with Trump, making note of each time they had sex, including one episode, she says, at Trump's New York City apartment when his wife Melania was out of town. And were you in love with him? I was back then. Am I now, which everyone has accused me of based on the last and the one and only interview I've done? No, I'm not in love with him today. Was I back then for my own personal reasons? Yes, I thought that I was. <laughs> and what do you make of him today? <clears throat> no comments. <laughs> um, you know, I, mm, you know, Brian, that was 14 years ago that I knew Donald a.k.a. President Trump as we know him today. Um, I don't think that he's the same person that I knew. I think back then he seemed much sweeter, um, nicer, more concerned about people's feelings. Um, you know, the man I personally knew was not this man that I see on TV. Now, do I disagree or, and or agree with his policies? There are some I like and some I disapprove of greatly. And she says she later heard from people at the National Enquirer that Trump, when he was president, wanted to know if she was still interested in him. I was asked, it's all hearsay, of course, I was asked if um, I still cared or loved Donald. And I said, why do you ask that? And he said, well, Donald was asking somebody, does she still love me? I just laughed it off. I don't know. 
Yeah, no, no, I don't love him, but no, I just laughed off the situation. So, Karen, looking back on uh, looking back on this uh, four year saga, do you wish perhaps you had done the interview with us and called it done? I do actually. Um, it was a whole big ordeal. I just wish I would have come clean in the beginning, let it out, and kind of relaxed after that because it was it was a um, kind of a nightmare for a while. In, in every sense of the word, and from A to Z, it was a flat-out nightmare. Brian, it was very scary. I actually went into hiding for a while. Um, even when hiding, I had strange people follow me around, uh, knocking at my door um, different times of the day, scared to death, following me home from events, church, whatever. It was pretty scary, and it's nothing I really want to do again. If you have to tell the truth, you must tell the truth. So at the same time, kind of a no-one situation. You tell the truth, no good deed goes unpunished, but yet, I don't know, Brian, it's just a weird situation I got myself into. And it was just the two of us, as you know. So we weren't really backed by anyone. It was just the two of us alone. And I think we did pretty well together. Karen, are you supporting uh, a candidate in particular this uh, year in the presidential election? Uh, Brian, I think I'm going to support the candidate that I feel best unifies us as a country. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Carol Heller and Karen McDougall, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.